Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and this is 10 Minute Workshop, where 10 minutes in the workshop is never enough. In this week's special video, I'm taking part in the No Lathe Bowl Challenge. That's coming up next. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that my workshop is pretty compact. Um, I don't have space for any big iron machinery. My bandsaw is a little benchtop model. My table saw is tiny, no planer, no thicknesser, no jointer, certainly no lathe. So when my YouTube pal Keith Ragonbone Brown came up with this make a bowl without a lathe challenge, it sounded right up my street. So where do you go for inspiration for something that's relatively cheap, easy to make, looks good and is readily available? Well, I go to Ikea. This is an Ikea Flodkvist bowl. Uh, we've had a couple of these around the house for donkey's years. We use them as fruit bowls and general purpose things all around the house, in the kitchen and everywhere. Uh, it's a nice design, it's a good size, it's uh, a nice angle to it. It's straight sided, so it's fairly easy to duplicate the shape. Thing is, I'm a sheet goods guy, 95, probably 98% of what I make is from MDF. And whilst I was sorely tempted to make a bowl from MDF, this is one of Keith Brown's challenges, so I thought I'd push the boat out and use something a little bit more exotic. Birch ply seemed to fit the bill nicely. So how do you make a bowl out of birch ply? Well, there's a few ways you can go about it, but the one I fancy doing was weaving it, cut thin strips of birch ply, and then weaving it together to make the sort of bowl shape. Uh, then I had a look on YouTube and thought, well, there's quite a few woven birch ply bowls on there already. So having another think about it, maybe instead of using plywood for both the uprights and the horizontals, warp and weft, I think, maybe we could use pencils instead. And this is how my plywood and pencil bowl began. Now I could make the base out of a simple circle of plywood, but that would be a bit boring, so I decided to make an end grain checkerboard base. These are really simple to do. Check out my plywood coasters video, number 123, for the full description. But basically, you make a square plywood log that you then cut into slices and glue together, alternating the ply layers to get the checkerboard effect. I've mounted mine onto a little circle jig that I use and cut the base out on the bandsaw. Cleaning up the edges afterwards with a sander. Then it's time for some geometry to mark out the pencil positions before drilling them out on the little drill press and then a final sand to P320 before applying a couple of coats of oil. With the base set aside to dry, I can start cutting the thin strips of ply and using my simple one-off parallel guide with the track saw, I can cut sub-millimetre strips consistently. Take a look at my rail jigs video number 035A for more information. With the strips cut, I can clean them up with a sanding block, paying particular attention to the edges, and then give them a coat of oil before putting them aside to dry. You know, back in the day when I was a photographer, or a photographer's assistant, uh, in my former career, you, you do all kinds of things for the job. Getting the shot is the biggest thing. It's, it's You've got to get the shot, that's your job. Uh, and you end up doing all kinds of things that in in other circumstances might have been called vandalism. Um, you do them because it's part of the job. Not really happy about it, not really proud of it, but you get the shot, which is the important thing. I don't think I did anything that felt quite as vandalistic as cutting the points off pencils like this. It's like cutting off fingers. Oh. Here we go. So here we are, we've got our plywood checkerboard base. We've got our truncated pencils. Um, I was going to put these in with epoxy, but to be honest, they're such a snug fit. Um, I'm just going to leave them in as a, as a friction fit because um, they are so tight, I don't see those going anywhere. So we'll pop these in. 
in theory the holes are all drilled to the same depth so we should have a nice steady regular height to them I'm trying to line them up so that all the lettering goes on the insides rather than the outsides they're so snug every time I put one in a little bit of the paint comes off So it's round about now that things start to unravel a little bit. Uh, you're probably already there because you're way smarter than I am. But what I forgot to account for was when the pencils go into the base like this, obviously they go in at an angle. Uh, and no matter how thin a strip of bendy plywood you have, and these are all sub-millimetre, when you start feeding this through, because of the angle it makes it really hard to get around. Not only does it start to break and start to crack, but it actually just doesn't look very nice. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a fail on my part there, which is why we find ourselves <coughs> switching quickly to Plan B, um, which is to clad the pencils in uh, little plywood panels like this. I actually think it looks quite nice um, with the with the black of the pencils showing through there as well. Uh, well one of the things, whoops, <coughs> one of the things you've got to watch out for though uh, is that obviously this is you know. It was never, I never made it with the intention of making perfect panels, so none of these are exactly the same. So I've started with a, a slightly larger template and then I'm trimming this down, uh, cutting the strips of uh, plywood to fit and then gluing them in place. Uh, I'm going to carry on with doing some of that now. Using my cardboard template, I can mark out the shape and then glue in the centre support with Mitafix before cutting it out and trimming back the top to size. I'm using Mitafix again to glue the panel to the pencils, carefully working my way around the bowl to try and keep a consistent panel gap. And finally we got the last one glued in place. And because everything was pre-oiled, there's no extra finishing needed. So yeah, that's how my plywood and pencil bowl came about. Uh, wasn't quite what I intended when I started. A bit of a happy accident, but I quite like it. I, I, you know, it's a fun shape. Uh, uh, and it's surprisingly robust. I think if I was doing it again to keep as an actual bowl for, to use, uh, I'd probably run some epoxy or something down the, uh, just down the inside of these joints, or maybe a bit of hot glue, just to keep it together a bit more. Uh, and again, with the benefit of hindsight, once I realised that the, the weaving thing wasn't going to work, I probably should have cut the, cut the base uh, straight, so that, so that you have segments following the shape of the, of the sides. But there you go, you know. It is what it is. Uh, I was very happy with how the uh, end grain checkerboard sort of base turned out. And I like it. It's fun. It's, uh, it's a nice, simple, little cheap project to make uh, and hasn't taken long to do at all. Um, uh, I think Keith Brown is going to make a playlist with all the Bowl Without a Lathe challenge entries on it. I can't wait to see what all the proper grown-up YouTubers are doing. They're probably sort of hand-carving bowls out of walnut and stuff, and I'm sort of throwing together bits of plywood and, and pencils. Um, if you use the hashtag B well, B W A L C bowl without a lathe challenge, yeah, hashtag B W A L C on all the social things, you should be able to uh, uh, throw up all, all the bits and bobs that everybody else has done uh, and posted on the social stuff along the way. And as I say, I think uh, Keith Brown's uh, going to produce a playlist with all the entries on it, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what uh, what everybody else has come up with. But this is my <laughs> little attempt, my little entry uh, into it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed doing it. If you have, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please do consider subscribing. I'm Peter Millard. This is 10MinuteWorkshop.tv. Uh, uh, new videos out every Tuesday and Friday. 
uh, at noon GMT. But thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much to Keith Ragginbone Brown for coming up with this, with this idea. I have really enjoyed it. Uh, but that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.